My name is Todd Trotter, and this is my war story. My dad ended up leaving when I was six to seven years old. And for some reason, I always thought it was my fault he left. Who was I to want to become like? Who was going to teach me? And so as a kid, I grew up with feelings of being worthless and just being no good. And as a kid, I used to hang out at friends' houses. I liked being at their houses so much more because they had a family structure. Each one of them had a mom and a dad, something I didn't. As I got to be around 12 or 13 years old, I got influenced by friends of mine that used to dabble in drugs. I tried these things and I liked the way they made me feel because it was an escape from reality. My mom loved me and tried to teach me good things, but I was just simply disobedient. That messing around with drugs when I was a teenager eventually led to harder drugs. I ended up going in and out of jail and acquiring 10 felonies. One of these last times of getting locked up, my mother died. And my mother was all I ever had, no matter what money I made and spent on dope, that my mom would always have a place for me to lay down. But after she died, getting out of jail that time, I became homeless. I lived under a bridge in Nashville. I flew a sign and I literally ate out of garbage cans for food. To me, that became a bottom because I had always had at least a home to stay in. Well, I got locked up once again for violation of probation. I woke up in my cell and it wasn't anybody in my cell but me and there was a Bible on a steel bench beside me. And it was like God literally speaking to me. I picked that word up and I just really cried out to God. Among many of these prayers, I haven't smiled in 20 something years. Addiction and drugs and alcohol took all my, they just rotted my teeth out. I had one tooth this time being locked up in the, in the front. It looked, I looked like a can opener, really, literally. And God, another prayer. I have nowhere to go when I get out of jail this time. Lord, if you'd put me where you want me to be, then that's where I'll go, God. And this time, upon release from jail, the day I got out, I was in a blue paper jumpsuit, and my friend Gene came to pick me up. Before I could get in and shake his hand in his truck, he said, do you remember Landon? And I said, yeah, I remember him. He said, I've been talking to him here about your situation, about you not having nowhere to go. And believe it or not, he's a counselor at this place called Warrior Ministries. Well, I make it into the ministry, and I'm there and I find out that they get to work with their hands on different jobs to help fund the ministry. We were working on a job and I met this lady named Karen. I noticed she had four children and I learned that their dad had committed suicide. And I was working on her house and I looked down in the yard and something hit my spirit. I said, God, is that somebody you would have for me? The devil just wanted to hit me because I was new into getting into ministry. He said, who do you think you are worthy of getting married, of being a dad to those kids? You never had a dad growing up. But I prayed about it. I prayed about it, Lord, if that is somebody you'd have for me, God, just make me into the man, mold, mold and shape me into the man you want me to be. And upon graduating the ministry, this lady Karen starts coming to our church a couple years later. Well, I meet her, we start talking, and now I'm married to her. I get to be a father to her kids, and something I've never asked for, he's fixing to bless me with being a dad to my own son. That's something I never dreamed of doing is, is having a child of my own. I never dreamed myself capable of producing children from the damage I've done to my body. I got involved in going to five different mission trips. I've been to Honduras four times and been to Haiti once. He's reestablished a relationship with my sister, my two brothers, and here recently within the past year, I've been talking to my dad again. And through the ministry, that a dentist in our church, he helped fix my teeth. He could give me a smile, but God showed me how to smile in my heart. Being a dad to these other kids, it, it, it's a whole nother area of accountability. Something I never had, but I've learned in reading the Word that this whole time that my earthly dad lived, I always had a father in heaven who loved me. And for that, 
I'm truly grateful.